Here we go. True value. True value. The true value of a woman. True value is a, is a hardware store. How many go to the true value in Inglewood? That's a good store, ain't it? I've known Mitch for years, and his family ran that thing, and, and I still go there all the time. Yeah, they're a little high on certain things, but I tell you what, though, if you need something, they got it. And they got good folk that work there. Many of them have been in our church over the years. Anyway, true value. Their slogan is this right here. Start right. Start here. Say that with me. Start. Start. One more time. Start. Start. The series of this, uh, the next several weeks is called True Value. It's starting right and starting there. If you don't value yourself, you're not starting right. You need to start right there. Okay? So many people in life. Pop it. Let's go. So often when we're searching for what really matters, we start wrong and we go to the wrong places for what? Answers. Value. That's what we're going to talk about over the next few weeks. Amen? Today, the true value of a woman. Start right. Start here. Here we go, Rog. We're rolling and clicking now, buddy. I'm up and going. Here we go. A woman is several things, and this isn't all of it. But watch it. A woman is a daughter, a sister, a girlfriend. Amen? Come on. An aunt, a wife, a mother, and that list could go on and on and on. From grandmother to, is that what you said? Grandmother, absolutely. There's lots of things that a woman is. Okay? Let's look at it. Let's just, let's just sort of go this way. You know, put up, wow, you know, do you ever matter? Let's praise the Lord for the women today. Come on, you're going to do that with me, this message. You don't want to be sitting next to one of them and not clapping. She'll pop you upside the head. Here we go. Do you ever matter? Sure you do. Let's roll, buddy. Who can find a what? A virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31, the greatest passage in the Bible on an incredible woman. So who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies? Well, we're giving you a new translation today. It's called the NGT, the New Gary Translation. Here it is right here. Amen? So we can understand it a little bit better. Here it is. Here's me talking right here. There's nothing more incredible than a good woman. Her true value is worth more than all the money in the world. Did you hear me today? Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. Say that with me. There's nothing more incredible than a... Her true value is worth more than all the money in the world. So let's talk about it today. Let's talk about the true value of a woman. And this is totally something different. Just really a lot of it just from my heart. A woman is God's special creation. I've read Genesis so many times. I've taught it. You know, God created Man from the dust of the ground. He said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. So God created man. Genesis 1.26. And so man breathed into, I mean, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of what? Life. And man became a living what? Soul. Okay? So I've read it. And I know where a woman came from. She came from his rib. Remember all that good stuff? Let's look at it. And the Lord God said, it is not what? Good that a man should be alone. So he makes Adam. Adam's with God. And when you think just Adam and God would be just good, wouldn't that be good enough? Say, God said, apparently not. Okay? Even though I've got Adam and Adam's got me, Adam is needing someone. And God made the woman, and he said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make a what for him? A help meet for him. Okay? Let's look at some other scriptures. And so the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on who? Adam. And he what? He slept. And he took one of his what? Come on, say ribs. I love ribs. Come on, say, say ribs. Here we go. He took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh thereof. Did God ever do something with that rib? Now, I'm telling you, right, but we're going to talk about it. Come on. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the, the man. Okay? Wow. I started thinking about it. I've just, in the past, just passed over that. 
God made you women special. Yes, he did. You got that right. You go ahead and say it, sister. God made me special. Ladies, would you say that with me? God made me. Would you say that to yourself? You really need to say this for true value. Come on. God made me. He made you special. Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. We got the little girl over there praising the Lord. We're going to praise the Lord with her. Listen. Listen. God made you special. What do I mean? Could he have made you right when he made Adam? Sure he could. And I want you to notice something. He didn't rub a stamp and make another man. That'll answer a lot of questions in life for you. I'm telling you that right. God made for the man, not another man. He made for the man a what? Something special. Very special. Keep looking now. Keep looking. Come on. Y'all going to have to help her though. I'm sorry. I have like the mind of a two-year-old. Amen. We do have a nurse if you need it. We love you, okay? Here we go. Come on. Hey, hey, stay right here with me, though. This is what it's about right here. Got it? For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's what? Womb. I will praise thee, for I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully. Marvelous are your works that my soul, boy, it knows that right well. Amen. So you're fearfully and wonderfully made. The true value of a woman. Okay? So specially created by God. You're His workmanship. A special thing. And you're different from us. I honestly think about it, The only thing a man and woman have in common is that rib. Amen? How many women agree with that? Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? I want to focus on, the, on something that I just feel like the Lord gave me today. It's nothing brand new, but it's new for me. And it's something I just want to share with you. The true value of a woman. So a woman is fearfully and wonderfully created. Did we establish that? Yes or no? Is that put to rest now that you know that from your Bible? You know that from your Bible. You were not created at the same time as man. You were created after the fact. Okay? And God specially took care to create you unique, to be a help meet for the man, to work with the man in concert. God designed you special okay that doesn't take away from the man we'll talk about that later today is your turn so the true value of a woman specially designed specially created here's the first thing that i thought of number one she is a nurturer say that with me she is a god did this god created you this way this is Him working inside of you. Do you know that you can value that? The love that you have for your kid, that's from God. You did that for me. Do you feel it or not? A nurturer, the word means a caregiver. The word means to, to raise up children, to care for others. You are a nurturer by nature. You got it? It's who you are. Listen. The woman, she carries her child inside her. She births her child. She feeds her child. She loves her child. She rears her child. She cares so much for her what? And guess what? She does it also for all of her kids. Okay? Now, guys, I'm going to just tell you something. We can say what we want to, but they're different than us. You understand, say, they left us out of the gate with that birthing thing altogether. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is there's also this nurturing thing that a woman is gifted with. And it's just not a gift from God. It's a special creation that's inside of you. Does that make sense? So you're a nurturer. Her nurturing spirit extends not just to her children, but to her who? Her husband. Her family. Her friends, and even other who? Kids. There was a lady in my life, when I was a little boy, I told the first service's story. Her name was Mrs. Aiken. My mother worked at a barbecue restaurant. Didn't get off till 4.30. Ball practice started at 3 o'clock. I didn't have any way to ball. If it wouldn't have been for a lady, I did not know her name at that time. If it had not been for a lady that stepped up to the plate, I would have never learned to play ball. 
And I love playing baseball and football and the things that I've done. But the point is, is that if it hadn't been for Mrs. Haken, she's the one that came and said, I'll take you to practice. She didn't even know me. Mrs. Aiken. I could ride with Kevin and Ken. And they didn't even live that close to my house. She had to come out of the way to get Gary Clark. But that was something God had created inside of this woman. Do you understand that? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? This is inside of a woman. By the way, years later, I became a Christian. I went on to be a pastor and started traveling, doing different things. I still go home and speak at that little old country church where I became a Christian. And years passed. I went back there, and I walked in one Sunday morning, and who in the world had started coming to that church years later but a lady named Mrs. Aiken. <sighs> There's Mrs. Aiken. And boy, she and I just connected so quick. And every year after, when I would come home and preach, Mrs. Aiken would have on a plate that she had picked up from a yard sale a red velvet cake to give me. Why did she do that? Because she was a nurturer. It was a gift from God. He created her that way. Ladies, He created you that way. Do you understand where I'm coming from today? And that might be, of course I know this. Well, maybe, maybe somebody here doesn't know it. Why don't you take ownership of that? That's who I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God, you put that inside of me. Amen? I want you to feel your worth and feel who you are. You start right and you start here. Amen? True value. A woman is the way she is because she is fearfully and wonderfully made. Keep looking. We're going to look at Proverbs 31, the backdrop. Don't, try not to go to sleep on me. Okay. Proverbs 31, 15. She rises while it's yet night. She gives meat to her household, a portion to her maidens. She looks well to the ways of her household and eats not the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her what? Her husband also, and he what? He praises her. So number one, a woman is a what? Nurturer. Let's go look at true value of a woman. Number two. Number two. She is what? Emotional. And guess what? Oh, we love the little babies, though. The, ooh. Yeah, that's right. She's nurturing like a mama does. Hey, the cool thing is they're making special things for mamas back there today. Oh, we love you. Bye. Bye. We love you. But we do love you. We love you. I just don't have the nurturing thing. I want it, though. I want it. Anyway. <laughs> are you all right? Amen. Praise the Lord. The ladies are like, ah, that's the way it is. You are cool. Here we go. Number two, she's emotional. We understand that. This is just me writing. Physiologically, God created women to carry and bear children. And with that special ability, there's a unique blend of hormones and chemistry that God Himself, what? As a good and necessary part of the woman. Okay? That's part of who you are. God's special creation. Well, you're just so emotional. Yeah, go back and go, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I was created that way. You listening? You hear that emotion back there? Do you think the nursery loves me right now? It's okay. Okay, okay. Amen. 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 There's some nurturing women that love back there. I thank God for them. Amen. Come on. So she is emotional. The woman is emotional. God created that. You all understand that? Yes or no? And I know the women do. And it's something that you face every month. Face head on. And that's just the way it is. That's who you are. But it's, it's much more than that. Out of this emotion that God created in you is where we get women who are tenderhearted, who are sweet. Well, that woman's just sweet. How about this? Kind, like Miss Aiken. Sensitive. Well, you're just so sensitive. Well, yeah, I am. I'm a woman. Ladies, right? Say, yeah, it's a good thing. Caring. How about this one? Intuitive. 
I mean, how many mamas in here, you just knew your son or your daughter, you just knew something was wrong and you just knew it. Can I see your hand? You just knew it. Did they come and tell you about it? No, did you know it before they ever came and you heard about it? Yeah. There's just something about a mother's intuition. You know what I mean? There's just something about it. Happy, sad. Oh, yeah, the tears. That's the way you were created. Don't put yourself down for that. Did you hear me? Yes or no? Put yourself down for that. That's who you are. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. This is who I am. Aggressive at times. Oh, fingers are pointing in the house. Can we not do that? Gentle. Emotional. Emotionally, you name it, a woman's what? The rainbow, baby. Amen? Come on. You got the emotions. That's beautiful. You know what God said? He said, that's good. You're no accident. I created you like this. This is the new part I saw as I was reading, as I was studying this time through. I just saw, wow, that's to be valued. You understand? That passion. Let's keep building. Back to Proverbs. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of what? Kindness. Man, when well, you found a good woman, with that man, is the, the, the true value of a good woman, I'm telling you, it's worth more than all the money in the world. Amen? Come on. Let's look at another one. We're building. Are you all right? I'm putting you to sleep. A couple of you. Here we go. Number three, she is what? Industrious. Oh, by the way, this is from the Bible. But I, could, I think I could have figured this one out without the Bible. A woman's industrious. But let's use the Bible to get our points real quick. Just Proverbs 31. Here we go. She works. Say that with me. She what? Work. Does a woman work? Yes or no? Come on. She works. She seeks wool and flax and works willingly with her hands. And by the way, most women I know work willingly. They work willingly. They're glad to work and glad to do the work they do. This is a woman. By the way, this is how God made you. You understand that? That's what I'm trying to get you to see today. This is who you are. This is when he took that rib and said, you know what? It's going to be just going to be special for the man, but just a special creation altogether. He has done this and gifted you and equipped you. You understand? So industrious. So she works. She does what? She shops. She's like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She shops. Absolutely. If it was left up to me what the house needed, the house wouldn't have nothing. Absolutely. I got mamas. I got Farlows. I got whatever. I got Burger King. I got McDonald's. Amen. I got, I got the Circle K. I got Sunoco. You know what I'm saying? I got it. You know what I'm saying? All right. You know, yeah. Thank God somebody's shopping. Amen. Come on. She cooks. Ditto to the last thing I just said about me. Amen. Here we go. She rises while it's yet night. Gives meat to her house and a portion to her maidens or to others. So she cooks. We're talking about an industrious woman. Y'all listening or not? And by the way, this is women in general. This ain't just one woman I'm talking about. This is women the world over. The women the world over is what's right here. There's a lot of good women on the planet. I'm going to tell you that right now. There's a lot of good women right here. Amen? And every one of you can be the best woman when you realize your value. You hearing me? Keep looking. She spins. But wait a minute. And she knows how to do it what? Come on, ladies. You need to thank God right now that I put that in the message. Did you know what? I'm telling you what. Most women in the country, because most of America, so much of America is rural America. I don't know if y'all know that or not. But our world, our planet that we live on, most women have never heard of a Macy's or a Dillard's. They don't know anything about any of that. Most women in the world, they have very little to feed their family on and to make it work. And guess what? They do it. And they spend and they spend well. And you know what? I honestly believe that in industrious spirit in nature, I believe that's a gift from God. I believe you ought to accept that. 
Some of you might not know how good you can be. How good you are. I'm going to say something to you. When I met Kim, we were just getting going there a little bit and in relationship and was moving down the road some. And then one day she looked up at me with that, that meek, quiet spirit that she has. And she looks up at me and she, I think she thought I was gonna, it was going to be a negative or a bad thing. And she said, I coupon. And I think my words back to her was, that's sexy. Because <laughs> y'all know how cheap I am, right? <laughs> hey, listen. But I didn't realize that she's got her coupon book. Let me say something to you. I never seen anything like it. My mama coupon. Listen, but this coupon book, she goes to Publix because she's got two little kids and she works down at the courthouse and ain't got much time. She's got a coupon book lined up where the coupons are on the first aisle. And so she doesn't have to look. It's all lined up with the aisles of the public store. And so she can just go, whoop, 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 whoop. You think I could do this, eh? Hey? I'd be throwing things off the shelf. It's a gift from God. You're listening to me. Amen. I just want to encourage you. I believe this is, this is right from the Bible. She considers a field. She buys it with the fruit of her hands. She plants a vineyard. This is a gift. This is God's working inside of you to help you. This is a good thing. And then she works some what? Some more. I'm just reading the Bible. She perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes out not by what? She works late into the night. How many women work a job? You work a job where you actually bring home some kind of paycheck and you earn some income. Can I see your hand? That you earn some income. Can I see your hand? Look at how many in this church. Let's praise the Lord for them. Come on. And they do all this other stuff too. You listening? Come on. She makes stuff. Am I boring you to tears? She makes stuff. She lays her hand to the spindle and her hands hold the distance. Here's what I mean. I mean, I have been in the probably thousands of homes in my ministry over the years. And I like people, so I go, go places. I have gone for a long time. I've never walked into any man's house and seen him sitting there knitting. And I hope I never see it. If you do, don't tell me. Listen, but I'm saying, I've, I've done that with so many women. They're, they're knitting something. They are crocheting something. They're painting something. They're making something. That's because he made you special. Did you hear me? That's who you are. She helps people. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. That's what Miss Aiken did for me. That poor little boy. Help me. Come on. She shovels snow. It's in the Bible. Look at it. She's not afraid of the what? For her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. I showed that to Alex. I, I know it's meaning something else. I know she basically ain't afraid of clo cold. She takes care of making sure everybody's got warm clothes in the house. That's what it means. I understand that. But the point is, is that Alex says, yeah, and they mow grass too. Amen? Say, are you hearing the value of a woman, the true value of a woman? Are you hearing it today? Oh, and by the way, after all that, she makes herself what? Look good. And us fellas, we do this. Aren't you done yet? Come on. She makes herself look good. That's who you are. That's how God made you. Isn't that great? You're not weird. You're right on track. You're right there in the Bible. Is that what the Bible said? Sure. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Okay, she's a Vikings fan. Here we go. I'm sorry. Here we go. Come on. Wait a minute. She does all that and still has time to love her husband. Yeah, praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Mark led out with that one. Yeah, he's going. Yeah, here we go. Hey, listen. What do I mean by that? I think you know what I mean. She has time to love on him physically. That's pretty incredible. She does all that. Y'all listening to me? You got quiet. 
her husband's known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, you know why he's known in the gates? Because that grin on his face. I'm sorry, I'm terrible. This is the just the value of a true value of a woman. Did you hear me today? Okay. And then she works some what? This is the truth, guys. This is not only in the Bible, but I've seen it. It's reality. Amen? Come on. She makes fine linen. She sells it. She delivers girdles unto the merchant. Okay, Proverbs 31. And here's the cool thing. Here it is. God, with special care and design, He created a woman to be able to do all that. And a whole lot what? More. Let's praise the Lord for you guys today. Come on, I ain't done. I ain't done. I told you this was different. Are you feeling okay? Say, I'm wearing the men out. You just wore out. Some of you guys are like, oh, God, help me. There's nothing more incredible than a good woman. Her true value is worth more than all the money in the world. Amen? Did you get that verse? Let's keep looking. That's going to get quicker. Take a little more time. This next point is... It's really important, though. It's my word. They're all of mine are up here on the screen. She is, say that word with me, surrendering. The old Bible I use, the King James says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Said a wife is to be in subjection to her husband. But I'm going to put you on notice, all of you, no matter what church you ever went to. The women of Fellowship Church doesn't need Pastor Gary Clark telling them they need to be in subjection to their husband. Did you hear me, yes or no? The women of Fellowship Church don't need Pastor Gary Clark telling them they need to be in subjection to their husband. They've been created with a special ability to be able to surrender and to be in subjection and know how to do that without me telling them, this is your place, this is where you're supposed to be. Are you listening to me or not? Did you hear me on that one? Yes or no? I mean, yeah, you ought to praise the Lord. Come on, that's good for all men and women to praise the Lord for this. Here's the point. That would be like me being as a man telling women, hey, y'all need to work. Y'all need to care for your babies. Y'all need to, yeah, y'all need to know how to go learn how to have a baby. How stupid that would be for me to talk like that. What's well, also stupid for me to stand over you and act like I know what I am, I'm talking about when it is in being in subjection, and that's a gift that y'all been given that I ain't. Did you just hear what I said or not? Now, this is my preaching. You might disagree with it. I believe you're uniquely gifted to, to, to surrender. So in many cases, put yourself second. Did you hear me? And that's not a bad thing. That's something God has somehow uniquely gifted you with. And God help us as men if we take advantage of that and somehow think it's us or God told us or something like that. Are you kidding me? Yes or no? Y'all hearing me or not? Did I lose any of you? Let's search it just a little deeper. A woman is fearfully and wonderfully created by God with the unique ability to surrender herself and respect and honor her husband. This is, a, I believe, an ability that God has given you. And it's unique. And it's a blessing. And it's good to serve not just her husband, but her children. There's a lot of women not because they wanted to, went without eating so the kids could. Is that true, yes or no? Say. Or mama went without so, so the others could have. So is that, does that sound just like mama, yes or no? Sure it does, guys. This is a gift from God. This is your value. This is who you are. You don't need some preacher like me telling you. Did y'all hear me or not? You know what? Still, you can, you can say I'm sexist or whatever. My favorite elementary school teachers are women. I'm sorry. I think that nurturing spirit. You understand? Just that nurturing spirit of a woman. Let me ask you this question. How many think that, don't you think in this planet today, most secretaries of, in the world, they're what? Most, most secretaries in the world are who? 
women. Do you think they're secretaries because they can't lead and be the boss? Or do you think they're secretaries because somehow maybe inside of them they can do that and enjoy doing that and like doing that. How many, answer this question for me. How many companies in this, this, this world, in the United States, you think the secretary is really running the company? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And she's all right with not getting the credit. Guys, all I'm trying to say is this is a gifting, I believe. This is Gary talking that God has blessed you with. And God helped the church or us as men to take advantage of that. No. We ought to honor that. Amen? God said, I'm going to create Adam somebody that's going to be his help me. And I think it was more than the physical body and all that kind of stuff. It was a whole lot going on when he made the woman. Amen? And this is part of it. Keep looking. To walk in humility... The most humble people I've ever met in my life have been women. This is Gary talking. Sorry. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Say this with me. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now we're talking about a good woman. We know in the, in the scenario out there, there are some that are not good women. I believe that. However, I believe every one of you have been naturally gifted, created by God, and you can be the good woman God wants you to be. Amen? And you have all that it takes. He didn't lack anything when he made you. Amen? Almost done. Two quick ones. They're done. They're fast. This one. She is what? So she's a nurturer, she's emotional, she's industrious, she is surrendering, she is strong. Now this is me talking. And all my years of pastoring, counseling, and even in my own personal growing up, the things I personally have seen women endure has convinced me that there's nothing stronger than a woman. You can quote me on that one. Nothing stronger than a woman. You never hear this phrase, deadbeat moms. Do you? By and large, mothers don't abandon their children. Not by and large, overwhelmingly, mothers don't walk away from their children. The Bible calls it unnatural when they do. Which tells me it's only natural for you. And natural means not just a whim, but God created you specifically and wonderfully and fearfully to love your kids. And even if all hell breaks loose, you deal with it. And that's what you do. Because you're a woman. You hear me? You're strong. You're strong. A lot of women just to raise their kids... Oh, they have desires. They have, they have dreams. They put all that on the back burner just to raise those young'uns. Is that true or false? You know it's true. You hear me? Strong. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Almost done. The true value of a woman. The last one, I couldn't leave this one out. Now, there's a lot of things I could have said today. Here's the last one. She's beautiful. Woman is beautiful. God, in his infinite wisdom and creativity, he really did something special with that rib. <sighs> Didn't he? Woo! He took that rib and he curved that thing all up. He added things. Woo! I'm telling you, I'm just talking. Didn't he say? I'm sure glad he didn't go at him and go rubber stamp, ditto. Excuse me. He created someone called woman. And here's my last little quote of the message. 
If there's nothing else you remember, you remember this from me. A woman's prettier than a man all day long. All right, you just remember that. Let's praise the Lord for the message this morning. Happy Mother's Day.